Hello everyone, welcome back to Slay the Spire. We will be continuing today, rather not continuing, but starting again with a defect run this time. We'll, we'll hope it goes better than the last two. So Ascension 20 again, let's go. First we're greeted with our whale bonus here. Looks like we were offered four options, meaning we got to the Act 1 boss last time. And we can choose a colorless card. We can choose three fights in the beginning to have one HP. We can give up seven max HP in return for a rare colorless card. Or we can swap our sharding relics, giving up our cracked core to, rank, to get a random boss pool relic. So let's take a quick look at our map. Let's see who we're fighting. We are fighting Hexaghost. And starting out here, we have a whole bunch of fights that we want to take it up to the left into a campfire, into an elite. It's not so bad. I, uh, I do like events, however, so maybe we want to pass with some events in it. We have a immediate shop right here. That doesn't do anything for us because we're not offered any whale bonus gold. I don't know if I'd be too crazy about that route, and outside of that, the route looks otherwise mostly uninteresting. Uh, this third route here has some fights, a few question marks. I think three qu uh, question marks is too many, I guess, in the last route. We get something good for the, from the whale, but taking three events with only two guaranteed fights, I don't think puts us in a very good position to take this elite without taking an absurd amount of damage. Uh, looking off here to the right... Four fights, elite, I mean, it's not elite, question mark, or all those fights again. Then double campfire, super elite. Uh, that one's possible. This fight would be pretty difficult. We might be able to get in a good position by then. But if we're not, we can go to the right, just take a normal fight. And then probably, we, we definitely, I think, need to take this uh, elite fight. I don't want to go through act one without taking an elite fight. It's just how you get the strongest. So let's take a look at these. We can choose a colorless card. We can choose three easy fights. Oh, I didn't check. Are there any... Oh, we could... <laughs> like in the silent run, we could uh, take all these question marks and try to get two free elite fights. But that didn't work out very well for us last time. And it, it might end up poorly again. Because, I mean, I think I built... Uh, the deck wrong the last time, especially for the slime boss. We didn't have enough damage. But the issue with taking all these is, yeah, we get two elites, but we're hardly offered any cards. And cards do damage, and we need to do, you know, what is he, 250 HP? So we got to be able to do that. So I don't know if I'm too crazy about sniping the two elites for free, as cool as it might sound. Uh, giving up seven max HP for a rare colorless card. Again, I, I just don't know how I feel about colorless cards, but maybe I gotta start choosing them. So I'm just gonna choose the choose a colorless card to obtain in hopes of it being something good and I get better at evaluating colorless cards. So we are given Deep Breath, which allows us to shovel, shuffle your discard pile into your draw pile and draw one card. Seems pretty good, it's a skill. These are all skills as a matter of fact. Uh, we can choose Madness, we reduce the cost of a random card in our hand to zero for this combat, so uh, the entire fight. Uh, this kind of works out to net zero, is it costs one to make one of our any one cost cards zero. So I'm not too crazy about Madness right now, maybe later, but honestly when you're offered it in what, Act 3, I'm, I'm generally not too excited about Madness even then. Uh, panic. Gain 30 block. You cannot gain block from cards for two turns. If I understand this correctly, we should still be able to get a uh, block from Frost Orbs. Which is, you know, obviously unique to Defect. So maybe it's a little bit better on Defect. I might honestly take the Panic button. In hopes of... Mm, it's maybe a little bit too much to ask to get it on. It's going to be most impactful in the uh, boss fight on turn two. I just don't know if we're guaranteed to set up a way to get it. Maybe Deep Breath. Deep Breath can get us things like Zap and Dual Cast back faster, which is, you know, most of 
defects already high base damage. Just just from the get go with these cards, you do pretty crazy damage. And of course, this relic. So I think I'm just gonna go with a deep breath here. Oh, also these are all uh, what uncommon because they're the blue lining, right? Or are there? I guess I just don't know the uh, color colorless card rarity jewel. But I think I'm gonna go with a deep breath here. Mostly just to get things like dual cast and zap back faster. And ideally the cards we get later are cards we want to play often. So deep breath will help us with that. Not crazy about madness. Panic button might be good, but uh, I'm a little bit afraid of it, to be honest. We're going to take a deep breath. So we're in an okay position. I mean, defect generally doesn't struggle with the early fights as long as you can get the damage out uh, pretty quickly. But fights do go on long. So you don't draw the cards you need, it can be difficult, but that's true with really any class. So let's take a look at our route here. I don't, maybe we can go for this super elite with these double campfire upgrades. I wonder if there's a safer option for us. I mean, it'd be going to the right here and taking this elite super late. Uh, late elites are cool because they're still, you know, the same strength as they would be say, if you fought them up here. But they're later, and ideally, when you're you know later in the run, you're you're stronger. <laughs> so maybe we want to look for a late elite like over here, and that would put us a whole bunch of fights into this, which is a little bit tough. But I'm not. Wow, that's just nothing but fights. And then we only get what the one campfire here. Mm, that's I'm not crazy about. Wait, what is uh this upgrade to? Just draw two cards. Oh, okay, that's good. I'm done with you, Whale. I don't want to talk to you anymore. Go away. Maybe we just take... Hmm. I might just go to the right here just because there's more campfires, to be honest. There's only one campfire and one elite and then a bunch of fights and double elite. Because we're... No, we're not forced into to double elite here, but... You know, I think I'm going to go to the right just to see what happens. And I'm going to choose the, the four fights, one question mark. Five fights is just a bit much. So I think I definitely want to dual cast here. I mean, it's just our most damage from a single card seems great. Now I got to think about, we're about to cycle our deck. We'll get our dual cast back. So I think I want to have a zap up front and I think I'm just going to block for now. So I think we can end this fight, if not this turn by the next one. Oh, wait, this is great. We can play this. And I think we just want to immediately play deep breath. Okay, well, we didn't get it immediately back, but we still ended the fight. Cool. Uh, we got the stack. I'm not crazy about this, especially given the fact that this is block cards from our discard pile. And we currently have something that shuffles out of our discard pile. And I also don't think it's a really good block card, unless in the right circumstances. Oh, they just changed this, didn't they? Hmm, I can't quite recall what they changed about it because I can almost never take it. So I don't like giving up focus. If you're doing like an attack oriented build, build with defect, I'm sure it's fine, but I never really do it. But ball lightning is just a fantastic attack common on defect. Kind of does everything you want. Attack some, does a little bit of damage, gets you a lightning, which is great because it does damage every turn <laughs> up until you use it. So we're being attacked by both of them for 14. I'm fine with just excuse me, full blocking here and maybe trying to pull back our deep breath getting our dual cast. Dual cast is really good here and if only one of them was attacking me I'd be compelled to dual cast and then double defend but oh they're still both attacking me fully. Uh, let's see if I can pull one of my defense back. No, no such luck. All right. So let's take a look here. I think we're going to take an unfortunate amount of damage here. More than I'd, more than I'd hoped for. Let's see here, we can attack for 14. We can break his, sh oh, we can't, we can bring up his, should we bring them to five plus 12 is 17 HP. And even then I don't think we can do anything meaningful. So I'm just gonna kind of play cards here, not think too much about it, break both of their shields and kind of take the damage we're forced to take there. And then we just play this and the fight. All right, that didn't go so great, but we got through it. Not so bad. We are also now offered a cold snap. A common attack gives us a frost, which is really impactful. 
Uh, frost is just something you kind of need as defect because you don't have uh, the mitigation in here that other classes have because you know silent starts with the neutralize and the survivor and uh, ironclad has the the relic that gives you healing uh, defect doesn't have anything like that so getting healing is healing in is very impact i'm not healing but uh, shielding is very impactful uh, rebound deal nine damage place the next card you play this turn on top of your draw pile so the next card we play this turn on top of your draw pile is there something with like we play that and then deep breath and then it goes back and we cycle our discard again i don't know i don't think i want to rebound especially not over a cold snap and auto shields uh i mean it's good if you really have no block but once you start getting frost you know frost starts doing stuff for you and you start activating you know your frost orbs during your turn it turns off auto shields so i think i just want cold snap mostly just for the frost to be honest i would i would think about it similarly if it was a cool headed as well mostly just to get the frost into play wow we are really just being attacked by everyone okay let's see if we can dual cast and maybe i just want to play hmm i think ideally i dual cast here it hits both of them or i guess even more ideally the front one twice Either way, I think I you know, I want to kill the front one this turn, so we only have one defend, and we're just going to end up playing it. Cool. We did that. I'm going to play the zap. I think it'll do more for us as the fight goes on, and as of course we cycle that dual cast again back. So I'm going to play this cold snap and this defend and play this because I want to try to see those cards again. I kind of wanted to defend it more, but this isn't so bad. Well, we'll just play this and our turn. Maybe I shouldn't have played the cold snap there because it would have been better just to draw a straight up defend card. Hmm. Well, you know, fight's over. Don't got to think about it anymore. No, it's, it's generally good to think about your decisions, especially when you think you messed up. That's where you learn. So we're offered a boot sequence here that is good in plenty of fights there's plenty of fights where you get attacked turn one and you want to kind of have an option to fight uh, unfortunately that takes up 20 percent of your opening hand unless you have other cards that are drawing more for you and sometimes you just kind of want to get other cards into play and this just takes up a spot capacitor is of course a way to increase your orb output we do currently have three ways to put uh, orbs into our uh, you know into play sometimes if I just have like a zap or something it wouldn't make a lot of sense to take a capacitor so you have to cycle the deck four times and play zap four times for it to be useful <laughs> uh, but because we have three it might be a legitimate option and the rebound uh, I think I still think similarly about it I'm not sure if there's some kind of synergy I'm missing with it maybe I want to play double cold snap uh, I, I don't know I think capacitor would be okay. It'd be nice to have um, additional orbs in my orb container thing <laughs> than the current three I have, and this this is a way to do it. It's nice in Hexaghost fight when I got to be doing pretty consistent damage to get through that fight and make sure he doesn't you know power up again and do all that damage to us. We can also sit on frost orbs with that more frost orbs because he does attack us pretty often so i think i'll take the capacitor here and also the boot sequence obviously is an impactful in turn one of hexaghost but you can keep it in your deck you don't have to play it and it's generally good uh later but i think i'm just feeling the capacitor more this also is an impact on the other two boss fights at least on turn one but it's good not into lagavulin when you hold on to it gremlin knob it's okay for a skill and then tri-centuries it's pretty good too so maybe it's boot sequence i wonder Zap, Ball, Lightning, Cold, Snap, Deep Breath. I think I'm going to go with the Capacitor. In hopes of it 
doing more with my orbs than just the straight up uh, innate block does for us. But honestly, thinking about how those, how these first few fights went when we were being attacked on turn one, maybe uh, that card would have been a good idea. All right, so we're being attacked for six here. This guy's buffing, and this guy, I believe, has a 50-50 shot of either buffing or attacking us for six again next turn. But nonetheless, I think I want to kill this guy first because he's going to be attacking us for more. And yeah, because if we kill this one first and he's already buffed himself, he's going to be attacking us for, what, 16? Which is just quite a bit. Let's go ahead and try to kill this guy first. I think it'll be okay if I defend here because I have a lot of lightning orbs in play and this fight should be over pretty quick. So he's still attacking us for 6 here. Let's take a look at our discard pile because we drew deep breath. Pretty common card in there. Hmm. I think I want to play dual cast and then deep breath in hopes of getting the dual cast back again to try to uh, evoke this for twice. Then any of these other cards are okay to get to. We really have to see what this dual cast does though. Oh, so it kills that one. Fantastic. So in that case, let's just do that, draw, and then we can just full block. And I think this fight should be over, but this is guaranteed to buff this turn. And we just kill him. Excellent. All right, so we've gotten uh, two potions now. Sorry for spamming this. That's <laughs> not a very pleasant sound. So we've gotten two potions now, and our potion percentage chance uh, reset. I don't know the exact percentages, but it, it goes up by, I think, 10% every time you don't see a potion, so you get more and more likely to get it, and it just reset to its base value. I wish I could tell you what that is. I just don't recall it off the top of my head. Nonetheless, we should probably use one of these potions soon, so we're not offered one later and forced to get rid of one. So we are offered a rebound. Wait, is this the third rebound we've seen? And the second reprogram. That's funny. Uh, I think it's just a straight-up compile driver here because of the uh, orb generation we have is quite good. Compile driver lets us draw stuff. And maybe we get a good turn where we draw cards and Blessing of the Forge something. Turn that into a good turn. I think I'm going to take that. I, I still feel similarly about the other ones. I don't really have an attack-oriented deck. So I don't think I want to take the reprogram. Or like a shielding-oriented one. And rebound, I just don't know about that one. Oh, we got a shot. Excellent. Ah, rats. If I could buy this membership card, I would. Nonetheless, we're still offered other good options. Cool headed is looking nice. More orb generation. It's nice to have unique orbs. We currently only have uh, one way to get frost in and two to get lightning. So the cool headed is an additional way to get that frost in, making our compile driver better. And it's a uh, draw card, so that's cool. Creative AI. I don't think it's great here. This upgrades to two, right? So maybe something with Blessing of the Forge we can do. But Creative AI just takes a long time to do anything. Like, it's a good card in the long run. Just because, you know, it gives you random powers. And, you know, one of those powers will eventually be impactful, like an Echo Form or something. But, like, in most of these early fights, you kind of just want to do as much damage as you can quickly as possible. Just try to get through it. I don't think Creative AI does that for us. At least not immediately when we need it. So I'm looking at, did they buff this from 6? I think they might have. Can't afford any relics. We have some potions here. Oh wow, a weak potion might be fantastic for us actually against uh, Hexaghost. But like I was talking in my silent video, the Hexaghost turn 2 attack is determined by your current HP. It takes your current HP, divides it by 12 and adds 1, and that's how it gets its uh, first attack. It's like, you notice how it's a number times 6, so it's x times 6, where x is your current HP divided by 12 plus 1, and it rounds down if it's not a, a nice number, not a divisible number. So if we go into it with, say, 23 HP, it would be, you know, like 1.9 something, but it would round down, plus the 1, so it would be 2 times 6 on turn 2. So, unless you really need the health, I generally don't want to rest here. But like, you know, if you're at 9 HP, maybe you rest, but that, that's a math 
thing we can figure out later if it's uh, impactful or not. Bullseye might be interesting because we have the uh, lightning generation and we have the capacitor. So in a longer fight, like the, Hex, the Hex Ghost one will be a longer fight. Which makes an argument for creative AI, but I think that takes too long in a Hex Ghost fight. Because you can't just stall out the Hex Ghost fight. Because you're going to eventually upgrade your burns, which sucks. And you know, do a big multi-attack, which sucks. I'm going to take a drink of water. Give me one second. So I'm mostly looking at the cool headed in the bullseye. I would also like to remove a card if possible. Get rid of these get rid of one of these pesky strikes. You know, I think bullseye might be pretty good. It also helps that Hexaghost is a single target fight. Uh, so we don't have to worry about like in the slime boss fight. We put it on the first one and then it goes away and it doesn't impact the other two, and then you gotta deal with you know all that what have you. But cool it might just be good too. Do we have enough for Bullseye and Cool Headed? 80 plus 50 is 130. 9 plus 4 is 13. We do, right? I'm doing, I'm doing my math right, right? You know what? Screw it. I'll just find both of them. Uh, I think we have the HP to be able to smith here. If something goes terribly wrong here and we still want to take this fight, we can heal, but I think we can just safely smith here. And to smith at least... Hmm. I'm not sure how I feel about bullseye upgrade right now at least. I think it might be good for the hexaghost fight, but when I'm thinking about later Act 1 hallway fights, I'm generally thinking of a couple enemies you have to fight. Sometimes you, fa you face just the, the single slaver, which Bullseye upgrade would be good in. But I'm thinking of, like, uh, say, the four little gremlins. There's a few, like, uh, what is it? Jawworm and another enemy. So Bullseye makes it a little bit less good there, because you're kind of relying on your lightning to be striking the Bullseye target. But obviously, lightning is RNG. It you know, chooses an enemy at random. But I wonder if there's even a better upgrade. You know, this might be pretty good. Uh, draw two cards instead of one. That's 100% better. <laughs> uh, Zap might be good. It's cool to get uh, lightning in for free. I'm not crazy about it in... Why can't I think of his name? Gremlin Knob. It's not great in the Gremlin knob because I feel like the lightning you get into play is it's sort of tough, especially when you know you get stronger when you play skills. Sometimes it's necessary if you want to do the damage though. Well. I'm not crazy about a ball lightning upgrade. I'm not crazy about a cold snap upgrade. I feel like I mostly play it for the little bit of damage it does, and of course the orb it generates. Capacitor. Uh, this is better in longer fights when we can actually, you know, make six orbs in a fight. We can't always do that as we are now. We're getting better at it, though, no doubt. We do have four cards that do it, so we kind of draw one of these every turn, huh? So we have 18 cards. Maybe a capacitor is good, but I think I'd want it later. Maybe at this one if we take it. Maybe at this one. But, hmm... We can ask ourselves how we do into each of the elites right now, knowing that they're also going to be exceptionally, well, not exceptionally, but much more difficult than normal elites. They'll either have uh, the regeneration, they will have the metallicize, or they'll have, what, the two strength? So we got to be thinking about that. We don't know which that'll be or what elite we'll be fighting. So uh, from, let's just go with Lago Vulin. Uh, you have an option to kind of get, you have some time to get stuff set up. Currently, the unupgraded bullseye will wake him up if we have a lightning orb. So we'll do the eight damage, taking care of his shield, and then the lightning orb will wake him up. So maybe it's not that impactful if we just upgrade this right now for the additional damage and the additional lock on. Uh, this would probably be pretty good into Kremlin Knob as well. It's an attack, which is pretty cool. And of course, it amplifies the orbs you have for longer. And we do have like a ball lightning to get into play, which we'll 
excuse me, I think definitely playing to a gremlin knob. Maybe not the zap, however. We'll see if we get there. And then four trice entries. That's sort of alternating between being able to defend when you need to and being able to attack when you need to. And we have things like Frost Orbs to help us out with that. Kind of have uh, every turn that we will have an option to uh, defend. And if we play Capacitor, we will have five slots. And if we have... <laughs> Honestly, if we have five slots filled with Frost and they're not the... Uh, Plus two strength will never take damage. It'll just be a very long fight. So I wonder if that's good. Like, I don't mind taking a long fight. <laughs> if it turns out that way, I'll just speed up the recording on YouTube. Uh, dual cast is cool. But I, I kind of feel fine with it at being one cost for what it does. Like, zero cost is obviously better, but it sort of feels like a diminishing return going down by just that one strength, one strength, one energy. So I'm thinking maybe Bullseye or Capacitor. Two of the Elites will be single target. So more likely than not, it'll be single target, which makes Bullseye better. Bullseye is not too great into Tri-Centuries. Because it gets rid of artifacts that don't really matter to us. Because we obviously have to play the Bullseye, get it again, then play it, and have the RNG on our side for our Lightning Orb to be hitting it. Which just asks like a lot. But to be fair, we'll likely be seeing a uh, single target. I'll leave if we opt to take this one, which I think I want to try to take it. Hmm. So many decisions, so little time. I think we'll go with the bullseye. Hoping that we get a single target uh, elite. And, yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> so we're being attacked for 20 here. We can play an explosive potion if we like and play ball lightning to get rid of that guy. Might be good, but let's play this cool headed, see what we get a defend. I think I'm going to throw this potion and get rid of that guy on the right. Do some damage to the jaw one too. We know we have to use this. And then I'm just going to block. I believe so, yes, to minimize how much damage we take. All right. So I'm going to play this and then deep breath. Just because I don't mind actually drawing that card again. This because it does a lot of damage. Do I want to play anything else? Just compile driver, see what we get. We might be able to just straight up kill him. Yep, we just kill him. Okay, <laughs> don't even have to worry about it. Uh, sweeping Beam. That's AoE, especially for the explosive potion we just gave up. Might be good. Into Tri Centuries 2, nonetheless. Steam Barrier. It's okay. We can upgrade it. <laughs> Streamline. Mm. I think we do okay with Gremlin Knob currently. That's mostly the fight I'm looking for it to be impactful in. I think I'm going to take a Sweeping Beam here. Just to continue drawing cards mostly, getting stuff cycling, getting stuff going. So here we are, tasked again with resting or smithing. I still want to take this fight, you know, I want to see if we can do it. I want to see if we can, you know, overcome, we can better ourselves. We should, we'll probably be using Blessing of the Forge in this fight. Zap upgrade might be cool, just to be getting more damage out in the field more uh, easily. Capacitor might be cool. Well, honestly, I don't think... Capacitor is only good, in my opinion, in the tri uh, entry fight. And you can let the fight go longer if you need to. And, you know, the fight actually gets easier as you get longer as you, you know, kill that first very vital uh, individual sentry. Or it's like a sweeping beam upgrade, maybe. An additional three damage to all enemies is quite good. 
Mm, I think I'm just gonna go with the zap. I think it helps with uh, hallway fights too. So let's do it. I'm definitely gonna be taking this bag of marbles, I think, to help with the turn one. Okay, so we got metallicized trisenters. It's a little bit difficult. Maybe this is the turn we wish to upgrade. We would upgrade these. I'm not really excited about any of these upgrades. I just thought of like cool headed. Ah, shoot. I think it'd be cool to get our frost into play, however. Because it helps with next turn, especially. And we'll probably draw a def uh, defend cards next turn, and we can maybe upgrade them if we'd like to. So let's just go ahead and do that. We also got a capacitor here, which I think we can safely play now. So we'll play this, we'll play our that bad boy, and I hope we don't die. It is a possibility I am looking at. Wow, we did not draw any defend card. Oh. So I'm going to upgrade this. Actually, I don't know if it's that. Let's draw, then see if we upgrade. Have we drawn any defend cards yet? No, we haven't. We're going to, right? Okay, fantastic. <laughs> I think I'm going to honestly upgrade this defend. I think it's just that important. And then we are going to play this bullseye on someone. Let's go on him. It looks like he got hit by a few of them. And we can also play this. Hope it hits him. Hey, right on. It did. Take some damage here. But I think we should be able to kill this guy this turn, I hope. And we can. Perfect. Shoot block. And this fight got significantly easier. So deep breath doesn't do a lot for us. Uh, I mean, I'm just going to play double defend and strike. I'm going to kill this guy just because he has lower HP to begin with. Sometimes there's a discussion to be had about how much damage you do, what turn you think you can kill him on, etc, etc. But just because he has such, le uh, such less HP. Mostly I'm interested in killing him first. No defense, take some damage here. Not too excited about that. So he has 18 HP, we do 6, 12, 9, 15 with that. So I think we just kill this one. I don't want to draw my defend plus here. I mean with this compile driver. I want to draw it next turn so I'm not going to play this compile driver. I mean, this works too. I wish this was, uh, what's the turn two one? Is it Horncleat? Yeah, Horncleat, then Captain Wheels turn three. But nonetheless, Anchor's still pretty good. Oh, we got a Claw. Okay, so we got one Claw with a card that has a fair amount of deck cycle. But I think Seek is just too good to pass up, right? I think Seek is just too good to pass up. So we can go down to 1 HP if we'd like. And hope that Anchor saves us in this hallway fight. And then I don't think take this elite fight with 1 HP. But that might be asking us a bit too much. And I would like to get to Act 2 this time. <laughs> so we're just going to lose the gold. Alright, so we're full blocking this turn, we can kind of just do damage, get stuff into play, maximize off as vulnerable. This fight should be pretty straightforward. Cool. Weak potion, fantastic. We also got a chaos, that is an interesting one. I also don't know if we have the HP to take this elite. I think I'd rather just go this way. Maybe heal. 
I, I don't think we can fight Lagavulin or Gremlin mobs, uh, that's uh, which Elite it's guaranteed to be with our current HP setup. I think we died a Gremlin knob in Lagavulin's difficult. Uh, I don't want another capacitor. We don't make that many, we don't make that many orbs yet. I'd rather just sort of upgrade the one we have now. Uh, beam cell is maybe not so bad with how many attacks we have. How does our deck do with Sneko currently? Not great. The existence of Deep Breath and Seek and a whole bunch of one cost are to that. So we're probably not going to take Sneko, so maybe Beam Cell's okay. I'm going to take a sip of water. I think Chaos is cool. Especially with the capacitor we already have. We'll have uh, slots open for, you know, kind of random stuff. It's also a cool upgrade, too. Two random orbs. Ooh, RNG. Woo! I think I'm just going to take the chaos here. I'm not crazy about the beam cell. I don't think it's bad. I just want orbs, you know. <laughs> uh, so let's see. If we heal here, how much do we do? For 21. That brings us to 33. That's beneath his 36 HP threshold, which would push him to... 4x6. So if we walk into this fight with 33 HP, it's 2 point something, so it rounds down to 2, plus 1, so it'll attack us for 3x6 with our current HP. If we weaken him, he goes down to 2x6, <clears throat> which is pretty cool. Or we can big, big dick it and go for a smith here. Try to take one damage here, so he only attacks us for one by six. <laughs> that's, I think that's a bit much. I'm just gonna rest and then smith the next one. Oh, cool. An event that doesn't take HP from us. I'm all for that. So we can remove a card from our deck. Removing a strike would be cool. Or maybe transforming it if we're feeling lucky, or just straight up upgrading a card. Maybe we want to upgrade something here, like a capacitor, a seek, a chaos. Removing a strike is like always good. But now that I'm looking at we have like a bag of marbles, which is kind of okay with the strikes. Not great, but. It makes strikes a little bit better on turn one. But the rest of the fight, I mean, they just suck. Uh, our turn one is, <laughs> we got two turn one relics in a fight that does mostly everything on turn two. Feels bad, man. I'm feeling either an upgrade or a transform on a strike. Not, a, not an upgrade on a strike. That would be, <laughs> uh, I don't know if I want to upgrade a strike. <laughs> I'd probably upgrade like a Chaos. I don't know if a Seek upgrade is quite what we want. Maybe an upgrade on the Capacitor. I think I'm gonna upgrade Chaos. Just gives us more orbs, more things to do with our deck. I was also thinking about the Capacitor. And in my mind, at least, a capacitor allows us to have more lightning and more uh, frost orbs in our... What do you call those? Orb slots. That's what they're called. Orb slots. Which is cool. But in Hexaghost, like, what, what do you do with one additional lightning or one additional frost, right? Because you can't let that fight go on long, which is sort of what orbs in my mind kind of specialize that you know you get this passive every turn is doing something for you and then you know the longer it does something for you the more value you get out of it and hex ghost isn't a fine i want to go on long i think i want to be pushing orbs through doing damage doing more and more with my orbs and that's why i want to go with chaos and i think we discussed this i will be smithing here 
just to do the math in my head, if we heal here, we go to 54, 12, 24, 48. So it'd be attacking us for five by six on turn two, which is a lot of damage, which is uh, a lot of damage. We'll probably be weak potioning him, depending on how the turn goes, but we'll see how it is. So looking here, might be a capacitor upgrade. It's better later, not great now, but is there something we need to desperately be upgrading for this fight? Ball lightning does a little bit more damage, but then just like I had to feel weird upgrading a common card over like seek, which is fantastic later. Maybe we just go with seek. Actually, no, I think if I'm seek is like I don't want to draw two cards because we're not guaranteed to get it on turn one, which is kind of when it's cool when we have a free turn against the Hexagos to set up stuff. It's cool later if we have a bigger deck and maybe more energy and more things to do. Maybe I just want to upgrade capacitor. It's a little bit more linear, almost. Pile driver, cool headed. Cool headed might be cool. Cool headed might be cool. Hmm. It's like, what does a seek upgrade do for us? We get to play it once. We draw two cards. What do we draw with it? Ideally, it's right after we cycle our decks, we have all of our cards available to us with the Seek, or they're in our hand currently, but likely we'll be drawing it when we're, you know, like, what, halfway through our deck or something, which would then maybe allow us to, like, Seek into a deep breath, into a shuffle, thus allowing us to get more of these things into play, if we've already used those. Yeah, screw it. I'm just an upgrade capacitor. Just get more orbs. Well, and we draw seek on turn one. Oh my god. Alright, well, it's not so bad. Uh, I wonder if I just want to play both my frost orbs this turn. That's probably a good idea, right? Just to have them set up. I think that's a good idea. I'm going to do that. I'm not excited about drawing both these defends right now, I will be honest with you. But nonetheless, let's play... I don't want to play... I think I want to play Ball, Lightning, and Cold Snap? That sounds like fun, right? Sounds like a good turn for a weekend and then playing all these three cards. So let's do just that. I was sort of hoping for a Frost Orb, but I'm also cool just sitting on a Dark Orb for a while as well. Let's do that. Wow, holy. We're going to draw <laughs> four cards that are Compile Driver? Let's go. Oh, that might actually be good too. If we draw all of our cards here with Compile Driver, then Deep Breath, it'll cycle all these cards back into our draw pile, and thus not giving us a, a better chance of drawing burns, like mixed in with our cards. Because if we just play like, a few cards here, don't play like, uh, Deep Breath, or like we don't cycle our deck here, he's going to put it into an empty draw pile. I don't know, actually, we're guaranteed to draw it next turn. I mean, cycle next turn anyway, so yeah. Forget what I was saying. I think that still sounds like a cool idea, right? Oh, no, it's no, it's a bad idea, right? Screw it, I wonder how many is that. Let's play this. We're actually full blocking already. So let's... Psych our deck, see what we get. Cool headed. That's neat. I think I like having a 
crossbow bit at the front. So just in the case of an emergency, we can immediately, you know, evoke it, get that blocked. I'm not crazy about having a lightning orb in the front. I don't think it does anything for us than it currently does, you know, now. But I also wouldn't mind starting to get stuff pushed through. Let's play this and see what we get. Hmm, ball lightning. Maybe because it's earlier on the earlier on in the fight, and we have a better chance of surviving his attacks. Maybe we want to be more aggressive with our attacks, instead of letting it go on longer than it needs to. And I'm also looking at the uh, Dark Orb synergy along with Bullseye. It will make this do 50% more damage, and ideally we get it on the turn in which we draw dual cast. So I think we should be trying to get that. So let's do that. Let's try to get something set up there. Let's hope we don't draw a dual cast here. I think I should have played Ball Lightning there, to be honest with you. Instead of the uh, other one. Well, you know, you know, sometimes it's just uh, something to just be like that. But we can just still active here. That's pretty cool. And I'm actually going to play, because we're guaranteed a dual cast next turn. This will be at 24, so it'll be 72 damage. Wow, that's a lot of damage. I did my math right. Let's do that. That sounds like a fun time. So we're going to go pop. Sick damage, homie. Maybe we want to keep the good times rolling. Maybe we want to evoke this orb here. I think I want to evoke this orb here because it sounds like fun. Alright, he's buffing. It's probably an okay turn to... Hmm, that's bringing two burns in. But you know what they say, YOLO. Nice. Strike. Oh, I think the fight's over, so. Congratulations, we have finally moved past the Act 1 boss. Which I don't want to get, you know, ahead of myself, but it's much farther than we've gotten before. Creative AI. Offered to us again. It's cool, no doubt. Creative AI does a lot in the long fights. It's a huge energy dump, though. Gotta put all of your eggs in one basket in one turn. But there might be turns that we are able to do that with our current setup when we can kind of just sit on orbs and wait. But bias cognition makes those orbs better. And boy, do I like orbs that do stuff. And buffer is cool. I don't think that cool. I think I'd rather just, instead of relying on this card to mitigate ideally a big attack, but sometimes it screws up and mitigates like a 1 HP loss, which feels bad, I'd rather just have like a generally better all around orbs that do more for us on every turn. But one, you know, unfortunate downside, you got to be careful when you play it. But, you know, as long as we think about what we're doing, we should be okay. So we're offered Astrolabe, Busted Crown, and Sozu. Gotta ask ourselves, do we need the fourth energy? I think it'd be cool with how much we're drawing and how much we can do. Something to consider, Astrolabe. I always love me a good Astrolabe. Generally, it's sort of three strikes, upgrade them to something generally cool. Or the Sozu, give up all future potions for energy. It's also a thing. Honestly, it might be a Sozu here. Because I don't want to give up future card rewards. Busted Crown, unless like you're really far ahead as it is, like maybe at the end of Act 2, I'd like Busted Crown more, but generally I like card rewards, you know? Let's go with Sozu. Who needs potions anyways? It's not like they carried me through Act 1. So if I saw correctly, we are fighting the Bronze Automaton. Spawn some minions, they attack us, they steal our good cards. Those thieving bastards. 
and he attacks us for a whole lot. On one of his turns, he's got to have an answer for that. And ideally not have our cards stolen at an untimely manner. We got to get there first, which means we got to get through all of Act 2, which can prove troublesome. However, I'm excited that we've gotten this far, and I will be honest with you. So looking at this, what do we want to upgrade? Do we want upgrades? Bias Cog upgrades, quite good. Seek upgrade is quite good. Especially now that we have more energy, more stuff to do with the uh, things we add to our hand. Other than that, we're pretty good. I'd be excited about upgrading both these cards. Which means we can look for rest sites. Something like up the left here, some events, some questions, a campfire. Maybe use the uh, speed potion in one of them. Get a shop here. We'd have what by that point? Like 200 gold? That's okay. However, that's a uh, double campfire. Wow, and then the right side is one campfire. Okay then. I think we're going to go up the left because I feel like I really want campfires. Ah, rats. Alright, our turn one is better against this guy. However, I do normally hate this guy quite a bit. So we're just going to apply everything. Oh yeah, there was an argument to be made there that we evoke first to try to get... Oh yeah, we should have done that. We would have gotten rid of one of his plated armor. If we evoked first, then strict, struck, stroke, striked. <laughs> I'm actually cool with playing Bias Cog this turn, if we get, like, uh, Frost Orbs into play here. I think that'd be pretty pog champ. I don't know if we need Capacitor yet, however. So let's just grab a Cold Snap. Grab some biased pog. We are full blocking. I should have played sweeping beam first. I shouldn't even play sweeping beam. Maybe I should have. Who knows? I'm gonna start ending this fight sooner rather than later. I'm cool playing a capacitor here. It'd also be nice to grab that bullseye. So let's try and draw rats. 50-50. It didn't work out. I'm going to be a little bit greedy here and defend. So I think we can save the HP here and not be screwed over by uh, that anytime soon. Let's play Bullseye. Let's play this. Let's play this. And it looks like we are sitting pretty. We took, what, 1 HP this fight? Shouldn't speak so soon. We actually haven't won yet. Okay, we won. See you later. Look at memories. We can't get it. Sucks. Stack, screen blind, steam barrier. Not too excited about any of these. Maybe, no, not a streamer, I don't think. Not at this point in the, in the run. Skip. Remember, kids, skipping is always an option. Overhealing doesn't sound too good. Choosing 1 of 20 cards it sounds fantastic. Okay, boy, genetic algorithm is here. Consume is here. Mm, buffer again is here. Double energy, hologram is cool. What do we hologram? We bring back stuff like Seek, we don't use it. Biased Cog, we don't use it. Faster if we don't use it. Barrage is also an option too with our capacitor. It's always a cool source of damage, but I think genetic algorithm is just really freaking cool. I'm going to take a genetic algorithm. Mm. 
remove a card from your deck, upgrade all strength and defense. I don't think I want to upgrade all strength and defense. So we're going to remove a strength. Birds, these bastards. I think we drew Bullseye and Bias Cog on a good turn. And Sweeping Beam for that matter. So let's play Sweeping Beam, see what we get. Fantastic. I think this fight should be pretty straightforward. Let's try and kill the middle guy first, I guess. I guess he's doing the most. I'm thinking if I want to use both my attacks to kill the middle guy to guarantee he goes down, or try to rely on one of our orbs hitting him. Which it has a better chance than not, but I feel like that's just sort of asking too much. Let's play this to okay, see if we... Excellent, we got it. We got him, lads. And then we can just play. So if I defend here, and then ball lightning, we take two damage. Or if I double attack this guy, we take one damage. Holy shit, I got my math wrong. Okay, that's embarrassing. Stay in school, kids. Oh, we got him, excellent. See, all calculated. We play genetic algorithms. Uh, fight's basically over. You want to do your shirt? Sure. Yeah. Bye bye, Birdios. Bye bye. Alright, we're going pretty strong so far. We're offered a leap, a rip and tear, and a turbo. Turbo gives us like six energy, which I think is just too much. Like, it's cool, but like the void. <laughs> I don't want the void. I get that you net energy overall, but drawing a void on a really bad turn is exceptionally bad. Rip and tear, not too crazy about it. Like, it's good on turn one, but you don't always draw this stuff on turn one. Leap is all around good card. Mm, I think I'll just take a leap. We don't currently have, like, immediate upfront block. We have, uh, you know, Frost Orbs that eventually get put into play and eventually get boosted by Bias Cog. But Leap's just... Leap's always there for you. You can always rely on Leap. All right, Sneko, let's see how this goes. Excuse me. Excuse me might be very interesting. Draw our card, see what we get. Uh, I'm just going to play the Genetic Algorithms. I think it otherwise sucks in this fight. And I want to play... What if I want to play the Strike or the Dual Cast? Okay, 16 this turn. Get rid of the Lightning Orb. 9 this turn. Keep the Lightning Orb. I think I'm going to keep the Lightning Orb. In hopes of it doing more over time. Alright, so you faster. Sounds good. Other than that, not too excited about what we got here. Alright, is this a turn where we can get away with playing a biased pog? I would think of playing biased cog, zap, and leap. Because we are drawing our bullseye soon. That'll help our zap quite a bit. I think that'll be okay. Drew a bullseye, sounds great. I'm going to draw this because we know it's going to be free because it gets added to our hand, it's not drawn. Because uh, whenever you draw a card, how confusion works is when you draw a card, it gets its cost randomized. But if you add it to your hand directly, it won't be randomized. So let's. Is there anything here like I desperately really want? No, not really. 
sweeping beam. I think it's on the place. Okay, okay. That's an interesting pull. I'm just gonna play this and then my turn. That actually does help quite a bit in this fight because things can go poorly very quickly. Okay, we're being attacked 27. That's quite a bit. So let's draw and see what we get. Wow. I'm not very excited about this. Wow. Four, five, three cost cards. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five. Wow. Count them up, boys. Read them and weep. Is this just straight up leap defend turn? There's no way we can evoke anything this turn, can we? No, there is not. So I am just going to do this. And cry a little bit. A bullseye again. We can just sort of play, I think, anything in the way. There we go. Goodbye, Cultist Potion. It's been an honor. An upgrade of all lightning. Interesting. Claw. So here's our second claw. If we took that original claw, we would likely take this one. And it might be. Like, okay. Don't think it's great. Second compile driver it sounds quite compelling, though. Because we do seem to have a lot of unique orbs in our orb slots, allowing us to draw, I think, generally at least two cards. Up to four, though. Let's take the compile driver. 48 HP. I think I just want to go to the left here. Get the double off, uh, double upgrade. For, like, biased power, genetic algorithm, see if those all sound pretty good. Sound good enough to me. Alright, so we can fight Tri-Slavers, who I hate. We can fight Book of Stabbing, who I hate. Or we can fight Gremlin Leader, who I don't hate too much. Our deck does pretty well into Gremlin Leader, because we can get rid of his adds, which make it more likely for him to buff and respawn them instead of attacking us. Because his attacks do hurt. Book of Stabbing might be a difficult fight for us, likely a speed potion fight. Same with tri slavers, honestly. So I think I want to upgrade Biased Cog. <laughs> Keep calling it Biased Cog, Biased Cognition. I'm going to upgrade Biased Cognition to help us out in those fights. Seek would also be uh, an upgrade I'd consider, also genetic algorithm, but I, but I think I need the immediate benefits of biased cognition plus right now over the long-term benefits of genetic algorithm. Don't get me wrong, genetic algorithm is a fantastic upgrade, but I just really don't want to lose all my HP to these fights. Gremlin leader, how long? Are so let's see what we can do. How much does that do, Tom? I'm thinking about drawing a sweeping beam here. That'd be cool. Does nine dam damage. We'd actually uh, draw it twice here with. Uh, actually, no, we can't. That's not how it works. It's silly me. But I think I still want to do just that. It's uh, very important to kill one of his adds on turn one, unless I think he's guaranteed to attack you on turn two. But if at least one of them is missing, he's more likely to not attack you. Let's draw this, let's see what we get. Oh, Bias Cog, that is pretty cool. Turn one, too early for Bias Cog in this fight. Let's draw and find out. We'll have to kill this guy eventually. Maybe not this turn. It's cool to kill this guy because it's just annoying to deal the shielding he provides, so I'm just gonna opt to kill this guy right now. Cool headed. That's cool. Probably end up being just cool headed biased cog. Sounds good to me. Alright, so we got never lucky. He attacked us, even though he has a decreased chance to do so this turn. We'll have to kill the guy on the left next turn. The guy, uh, Big Boy, doesn't have... I don't think he has a chance to attack us next turn, so we can mostly focus our efforts on killing him. 
but I will be speed potioning because this is just a shit ton of damage. And we'll try to kill this guy as quickly as possible. We haven't drawn a capacitor yet. It does feel quite bad. And I also want to bullseye this one. But I gotta kill this one. So I'm gonna... Pray to God that when I bullseye here and then chaos and then dual cast, one of them will hit him. So I think we need to bullseye this guy. Fantastic. Play that. End our turn. And if he attacks us again, I'll be very upset. Oh my god. I, I genuinely didn't think he had a chance to attack us again. Oh no, because he was preparing last turn. Oh my god. Alright. We just maximize. Oh. Burr, 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 burr. Healing, we maximize defending here. And we do that by playing that. Compile driving and hoping to get like... Even a frost orb isn't that great here. Is this just the end of our run? No way, right? Surely not? Well, let's see what we draw. I think we're dead. Or my math is just... Oh. Okay. So we got through the fight. We can't say that we didn't get through the fight. That would be a lie. Oh, jeez. Okay, so we were given a nice comfy pillow we will be able to enjoy here shortly. Oh, jeez, my heart. I genuinely thought we were going to die there. I wasn't even doing math in my head. I was just kind of thinking we got a full block or we die. Fourth rebound. So, and, and it's interesting. The next card you play gets placed atop your draw pile. Chaos? Cool headed? Sweeping beam? Uh, not too crazy about them. I'm just gonna skip and get the hell out of that room. So we will be uh, resting here. As much as you might expect I can to be able to fight an elite in two hallway fights with one HP. Uh, maybe on the wrong channel for that. I'd encourage you to look elsewhere because, oh geez, that's not going to be us. We're offered a mob bank here, right before a store. Which I'm not too crazy about, but I kind of want to use the store. So we're going to take the sapphire key. Alright. So we have a core surge, which helps with our bias cognition. If we play it in the right order, we will uh, deny, we will prevent the bias cognition debuff, which is great. Another bullseye, I don't really want another bullseye. The one we have now is pretty doing its job pretty well. Overclock is okay drop, but I don't think that's what we're looking for in this store. Rainbow is also quite cool. Maybe not, what we're, maybe not what we're looking for. Loop's also pretty cool. But so is this fairy potion. Because it may just be the matter of life and death in this fight. Hmm. But you know, sometimes you just gotta believe in the heart of the cards, pick the artifact, hope it's gonna work out well, and not have money for anything else, except for a skill potion which you can't even buy. What am I talking about, fairy potion? We have Sozu. Come on, Brandon. Get on, get on, get on the right page here. There's, there's nothing else, right? <clears throat> nothing I was overlooking other than my own inability to understand. We have Sozu, so we can't buy potions. Silly, silly me. I'm gonna take a sip of water before we don't die to this fight. All right. Being attacked for a lot. However, we are blocking for 10 automatically from Anchor, so thank you for that. We 
we can also ask ourselves <clears throat> if we want to be using our core surge artifact to prevent his weaken next I mean his weakness is vulnerable next turn. It's a little bit tough to guarantee though. I could probably seek something this turn. Like a genetic algorithm? Or maybe just delete. Might just be a leap this turn. I'm gonna go for the leap. We can play this. We can also play this sweeping beam. It doesn't kill him, right? No, not unless we get lucky with the orbs. Oh, jeez. Oh, it hit him. Fantastic. Well, one in a third chance. What are you going to do? So it looks like we'll be opting to deny his vulnerable this turn. Of course, Surge. It's not so bad. Actually, maybe we can just kill him, huh? Yeah, we can. Fantastic. All right. This fight got much easier. We're still being attacked for 21, however, and we can deny that by full blocking? No, we can't. Do 17. Well, that's not so bad. Could have played the uh, frost generation one there, but like I just wanted to block, so I blocked. That seems to make sense to me. Let's see what we draw here. Hmm. I'm kind of feeling like I want to full block again and then like do what I wonder. Dual cast capacitor or ball lightning. I'm sort of thinking capacitor. So this fight will go on for oh, I want to say three more turns. And we have a chaos coming up and a bias cognition. It's cool to have all those orb slots available for those things to do stuff for us. Wow, we are really not out of the woods yet, huh? No chaos. We can draw it with uh, what have you here. Let's do just that. Wait. Say it ain't so. Wow. We are really asking a lot from our deck right now, aren't we? Oh, geez, this isn't good for my heart. Never considered that I might have a condition before this, but I just might. Oh, All right, so, I mean, one way to think about this is we ended the Gremlin leader fight with one HP. I mean, this fight with 2 HP. So, I i mean, that's an upward trend if I've ever seen one. Offer to boot sequence gives us 20 block turn one, which is. might actually be good into like a fight like this when we're uh, at 2 HP. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm gonna take the boot sequence. So, I'm, I'm genuinely like that. Oh, and it's a fight. They don't do anything on turn one. Okay. I think we died at this fight. I will be honest with you. It looks like a bunch of mad men in cultist outfits it may be the end of this. But, you know, it could be worse. I'm not sure how it could be worse. I just wanted to say that to make myself feel better. All right. We have to play this here unless we die. But, you know, we decide this turn they attack us for 33. Which, if you didn't know, is uh, quite a lot. That's actually a fantastic chaos. But, uh, <laughs> it doesn't make a difference. Wow. I, I, did genu I genuinely did not expect to live to the turn that they do 48 damage to us. 
at all whatsoever. But, uh... I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not really thinking about what I'm playing because I'm just that sure what we're dead. Alright guys, well, it has been a pleasure. We have been defeated this time, vanquished last time, but defeated this time. So you know we're you know we're really getting new endings here. You know, sometimes you get the good ends, sometimes you get the bad ends. Looks like we got the defeat end, unfortunately. Almost got to the Act 2 boss, but Act 2 itself can be quite the beast. Nonetheless, hope you guys enjoyed it. We have now played all three characters. You didn't see the Ironclad one because that one was... I don't want to talk about that one. But in a, in a poorly, nonetheless, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know. Have a good one.